and welcome again to the channel today we're back on GT Sport and we're back with a daily race at the Nürburgring GP track driving the group 2 Super GT cars as you can see there I'm starting from P1 managed the reasonably good qualifying time that put myself into the top 10 stars I think it was briefly in the top 10 stars I'm not sure if it was there by the end of the night starting from P2 there IRT Nisman you can see a very fast driver in this combination in the, in the Super GT group 2 cars he's driving the Nissan I'm driving the Lexus last time I was at this track I drove the uh, Honda decided to try the Lexus out this time because I found that at Suzuka as well it, it suits my drive better for race conditions hot lapping is pretty much identical but in the race I prefer driving this as you can see they're going into turn one all 20 drivers trying to get through turn one as cleanly as possible it looked like it was fairly clean no real instance as you can see in the distance everyone seems to be getting through that corner without much going on there pushing hard on the opening lap wanted to try and build the lap up I had to push really hard in this race I knew from the start that IRT Nisman was going to push me to the limits throughout this race he's a very fast driver and very consistent as you can see in the background there everyone seems to have got through the first sector without much going on and P3 I think was still the other IRT driver but myself in P1 and P2 and P3 pretty much as it said actually I think P4 is now the IRT driver I think he must have got overtaken somewhere so he must have lost that position on either the first few corners somewhere but now I'm trying to push really hard as you can see there I'm trying to make sure that I don't make any stupid errors but I, I knew this race I'd have to push the limits every, you know, to, to the extremes pretty much as what I can do in race conditions and sometimes you have the ability to not really do that you can drive 90% but this race I had to be close to 100% I know that this guy I cannot let him get me anywhere near my slipstream on any of these straights you can see they're really pushing hard through that corner to ensure that there was no opportunity for him to pick up the slipstream going down the straight and make a move into the chicane this is one of the overtaken opportunities you will get the Nürburgring GP track so really trying to get a strong exit from that corner aggressive over the curbs cars bouncing as I'm really trying to push to break that slipstream and to try and you know just to ensure that he can't get in my slipstream for any overtaking opportunities again into the third turn one as you can see there going over to the right hand side was going to go defensive but to uh, try and break the slipstream realized there was no real need to do it I've built up enough of a lead as you can see there driving on board the gaps around seven temps as long as the gap is over pretty much six temps to seven temps of a second on the Nürburgring in this car there's you're never really gonna get they, they can't really get close enough to make a move anyway as you can see a massive oversteer moment on the curb again had to correct that and then like I said yeah if you can't really make a move at the Nürburgring GP track if in these cars because of the speed they have if you're over six temps behind by the time the slipstream is caught up you're into the next braking zone so it's a kind of a buffer that you need to get is that half a second to six tenths of a second to ensure that they, they're not able to make a move into any of the corners you know if you start getting to three four tenths they start building that slipstream up to closer to one two tenths by the end of the straight and that's when they can start making you know, a, a lunge into a corner somewhere so really important that I kept on it and just tried to keep the pace 100% so that there was no opportunity to get anywhere near the rear of my car and, and that isn't as easy as it sounds in these cars these are very fast cars you know driving these cars the extreme no traction control obviously we, I don't use traction control and just trying to be as aggressive as I can you can see there this is a sub part of the track that I seem to be quite strong on you can see they're getting on the power really early early upshift into fourth gear and you'll notice as well I'm, I'm doing a bit of short shifting even though I'm driving aggressive I'm keeping the shifting just between three quarters and towards the end of the rev room. I'm not over revving the car although that is the fastest way to probably drive it by revving it a little bit these cars are not a massive loss of time when it comes to shifting so you'll see me changing gear around three quarters of the time you know three quarters of the rev range a lot of the time between three quarters and you know just before the end and that will save you a surprising amount of fuel in these cars and you won't need to go to the fuel mixture too that is why you'll see a lot of people being able to pull away without any loss of time uh, and then you come to the pit stop face and they've saved a lot of fuel as well that's where where it comes through is the gear changing it's a waste of time doing the fuel mixture way because although it, it will save you a bit extra it's not really going to save you a massive amount it's probably best to use that one mixture and do short shifting and maintain your speed and save a reasonable amount of fuel however you know in certain circumstances if i was in a slipstream with someone it's a really you know, close battle between someone who's really fast but I'm able to stay in their slipstream through the corners with using two mixture 
or something like that with short shifting as well and then getting it back into one mixture for the straights I would possibly do that but when you're in the lead I think it's risky going into two mixture because if the car behind doesn't do it they're going to get extremely close and you, you're putting yourself at risk of getting overtaken so I chose to push this race a little bit faster keep it in one mixture just do some reasonable shifting to save some fuel and this then kind of forces the guy behind you to do similar kind of process of being aggressive on his fuel rather than using the mixtures to save fuel as you can see they're driving really aggressively through this section again it's one of my strongest sections in this car some cars it's not so strong the group three cars i struggle a bit here but this car seems to suit my my the approach to a drive and a, you know really strong front end and that's what i like on a car strong front end with rear stability as well and this is why this car i've picked this car more for the racing at the moment over the this the honda i did do this race last time in the honda it's not a bad car it's probably fairly equal you know in terms of the capabilities of the car it's probably a bit faster in overall potential but i just feel more comfortable in the lexus it, it, it just feels more planted to me it suits my the way i put the throttle down a little bit easier the honda you have to be a bit more you know gentle with that throttle input but this car you can be a bit more aggressive you know even with traction control off i find that you can really squeeze the power a little bit easier than you can with the honda and that's why i've decided to do most of my racing in this car recently as you can see there having another little moment on the exact corner where it pushes you wide because of the oversteer just about staying on the green astro the track limits have been slightly altered on this track that i found out just yesterday in the group three cars but it seems to affect different cars um, the Super GT cars, which are faster cars, they seem to have opened the limits up slightly and I, I kind of don't mind that because it's a lot harder in some of the faster cars to do that but the Group 3 cars I noticed yesterday at the Nürburgring GP track I don't know who else drove it but the track limits were so strict compared to what they normally are you, you've seen it was quite surprising I think it was quite refreshing actually because so many people were picking up penalties uh, one race some guy kept picking up every single lap and then he kept trying to lose the penalty right in front of me in the braking zones which was a little bit frustrating and very dangerous i don't advise anyone doing that because if the car behind is coming at you at you know 30 miles per hour slowing your brake you're faster they they could you're braking 50 meters before the braking zone you're going to end up with a collision and it nearly did twice with myself and it was really frustrating having that in front of me it's, it lost me quite a lot of time in the race however i did have another race that was a lot better which i will be uploading um, hopefully in a few days i've got quite a few races to catch up on in the meantime and i want to keep doing these track guides obviously i had the track guide out this morning and then this race footage as you can see there now coming to the end of lap four pushing really hard you can see lap three i managed to get the fastest lap of the race of 47.9 that was a reasonably good lap there was potential to go faster but like i say as long as i was in the low 48 uh, around that area i was happy you know this car driving 48 zeros for me to 48 threes is fairly comfortable it, if you make a mistake you tend to go into a late 48 but i wanted to try and keep it consistent you can see again i was trying to push it through that corner and get the car to like bite out you know kick out a bit but as i did that it kicked out a bit too much and then causes you on the steer that runs you wide again so it's really tricky these cars in the, through the first sector especially with the power they have but really fun to drive as you can see there irt near man running quite wide on the exit of that second the second part of the chicane which is why they must have done something with the depending on what car you're driving the track limits because if you did that in the group three cars yesterday there was no way that you, you would be getting a penalty and when i show you the footage you're going to see what i mean it's so much more respectful and it is i think what they've done for the group three cars is they seem to have followed the fia rules when the barriers were there they seem to have implemented that but without the barriers being there so it took a bit to get used to you could see a lot of people who were struggling with it until they got used to it and then it actually made for better it kind of was better because obviously you didn't have cars running out too far wide most people were staying within the limits and people were getting a lot of penalties but it was great racing still and um, again Nürburgring GP track I do love it but it's not as strong for me in the group 3 cars as it is for the group 4 and the super GT cars I seem to be stronger in this class of car over the group 3 cars as you can see there jumping on board with the replay camera as you can see I've managed to build up a reasonable gap to P2 now you can see it's just over a second I've got him out the slipstream I've been pushing reasonably hard you can see you know I'm able to drive consistently and fast with this car without making too many errors 
and that's why I picked this car. And coming through to turn one, you can see there no need to get out the slipstream. There was no need to try and break any slipstream toe or anything because I got the gap over 1.1 seconds, which is kind of what I look at. And, you know, if it's over a second, I don't really worry about slipstream. If it's like eight, nine attempts, then I will try and break it sometimes just to avoid them picking it up. As you can see, they're going through the, fir the first sector again, running onto the green after it ran quite wide that time. You can see if you did that in the group three cars, it was a penalty. Uh, it, but they seem to have allowed it in the group two cars which is probably because they're traveling a little bit faster and they're a little bit harder as you can see p2 ran very wide out of that that second part again and that's where you would be picking up a penalty in 100 percent in the group three cars it's, it's strange why it picks it up on some cars and not other cars and it, it makes me think it's got to be something to do with unless they've set new like parameters for like different cars something that affects you know to do with the speed of the cars how the, the track limits work which is fair enough because i think if they try to make it too strict like le mans in the group one cars le mans was a pain it was a, it was just too hard it was it was not easy to drive and it, it just it kind of ruined the fun of it a bit for me i think they just needed to open them limits up a bit like they've probably done with the group two here and the group but I'm guessing the Group 1 cars will be similar to what the Group 2 cars are in terms of track limits here. They still need a little bit of raining in, I think. You know, it's clear they, they, they're still, you can still push them a bit. But you'll find that some people will complain about the track limits here. But you've got to understand that in these races where you're pushing as hard as we are at the front, you're going to drive to what the game allows you. And it's the same in real life. You, know, you come to an F1 race, if they say that you can race to these limits every single f1 driver will race to the, the limits that are allowed no one's going to say oh, i'm being respectful i'm going to stay that extra three foot in the track no one would do it people are going to be pushing as hard as they can in these top split races as you can see they're going in the pits i've managed to say reasonable fuel um irt this man saved two percent more fuel some of that would have been because of the slipstream effect of saving fuel behind me and uh, it does happen you gain you save that little extra bit of fuel obviously you're able to short shift a bit more but it's not enough to really jump me in the pits by looks of it you can see there coming out the pits he's still behind me about 1.2 seconds behind and that's because obviously i've got about one point i went in the pits with about 1.4 second lead i've managed to build that lead up to 1.4 seconds and it's really going well so far this race i didn't expect to be able to comfortably keep a gap to irt nisman i know last time i raced him i think he beat me he, he, he beat me at this track and it was because he had saved more fuel than what i was able to do i wasn't as um, on it in terms of the fuel saving at that point and i also think I, I, I prefer the Lexus's ability to save fuel with the short shifting over the Hondas. The, the Honda can do it, but I think for my driving style, it's easier with the Lexus and just keeping it in one mixture seems to save a reasonable amount of fuel. As you can see there, we're going to jump on board with myself now, I'm trying to push really hard on this outlap. It was really important. You can see the gap's around 1.2, 1.3 seconds, and I didn't want him getting back into that slipstream. I drove quite deep into that hairpin there. You could see that corner is a real pain, but if you do drive deep into that corner, you can kind of get away with it because you can get really good, strong exit speed. As you can see there, it went down to 1.1 seconds, but now it's back up to 1.2 seconds where the exit speeds come out, come, you know, come into effect, and I've managed to pull that little extra away from my LT Nisman. But this race was really sweaty. I have to say, I was sweating so much at this point because it was a hot day in the UK and when you're driving with no breeze in the you know in your with your setup and you've got someone pushing you as much as this and this is again showing why I do love GT Sport you know going into a public lobby race and getting a race like this where we push so hard and you can visually see how far we had pulled away from P3 and 4 they were nowhere to be seen on the replay cameras because we were completely on it at this stage we weren't making errors we were pushing so hard and you look in the background there and you cannot see a single driver in the background and that's because we were driving so aggressively and really pushing the limits and there were some fast drivers in this race you know there were some reasonably good drivers you can see the names there there were some fast people that you know you will see in other races that are, are fairly competitive but we were really on it and um, pushing as hard as we can. I think there was fast, you can see there, ran really wide there. That's pretty much, I think, as much as you'll get away with now in the Group 2 cars, where you used to be able to run extremely wide out. Um, like I was saying, yeah, I, I think there will be people that were more competitive than myself, probably maybe half a second a lap, but I think this is, it is a strong combination for me, and I'm definitely feeling like I'm making progress. You know, if you go back to a few weeks ago when I actually got beat at this combination by the guy behind me, and it was because he'd managed to save more fuel and actually you know outpace me a bit this time i'm able to 
hold my pace and save the amount of fuel and it, it's definitely progress I'm making on the game and it's really it's really good to see uh, it makes me excited for the FIA I think I'm not going to be it's going to be a struggle to get in the top 24 I think in the, the official FIA season because everyone's going to be back on the game all the big names but I'm really looking forward to making an attempt at I'm hoping I can do both nations and the manufacturers. I'm hoping they've done something to allow it easier to do both. You know, if they've done the same situation where they're both on the same days, I will be a, di a bit disappointed because not everyone has the time, especially with myself uploading at least one or two videos a day on YouTube, to practice them for both of them and to do both races. It's just not really possible. As you can see, they're driving really aggressively through the chicane, trying to make sure that I'm keeping that gap to P2. You can see he's just about close to that slipstream. He's just probably a fraction of it, maybe a tenth or two away from that slipstream, like 1.1, 1.2 seconds. It may be a, he was slightly in it there because if I've gone defensive, and like that, it's probably because he was in the slipstream, maybe nine tenths behind, as I then go into the braking zone for turn one, trying to make sure that you hit this braking zone every time perfectly really does help, because it helps you swing the car back over to the right hand side, which then helps you to keep the line all the way through this left hand, as you can see there, did it a little bit better that time, not running onto the grey tarmac, keeping it within the green Astro, which I actually, that, that's my aim pretty much in these cars, is to keep it on the green Astro, as long as I don't run further onto the tarmac on the outside, I don't really mind, I know some people are saying, but that's not, they're probably complaining it's not the track limits, but, you know, this, they allow it, and that's, that's all you can say, you know, if they allow it, you, people are going to use it, as you can see there, pushing onto the Astro on the outside there again, and this racing, this was extreme racing on GT Sport, this is two drivers pushing as hard as they can, and not making errors, you can see both of us have made no errors while driving to the limits of the track, not, no real massive errors, Every lap's been pretty equal. I think there was one lap that I did at the start that was a 48.8 or something, where I did lose about five, six tenths of a second, and it brought P. I think it even might even be this one of the laps after the pit stop. I'm not too sure. We'll have to have a little look as we jump on board next time and see the lap times on the screen. And I'm pretty sure there was one lap that was quite far off, and he actually hit a good lap on that lap, which then brought him back into the slipstream. And it may actually have been this lap, as you can see there, getting really close to the slipstream now as we come to the chicane for the next braking point you can see they're braking really hard and really aggressive over the chicane and you can see their p2 getting really aggressive i didn't really quite hook that up and you can see i actually went too deep into the corner which then compromised my exit bit and it's given him a real chance of getting close to me on the slipstream and you can see that i knew that straight away you can see the exit speed i got i really got on the power early and tried to ensure that there wasn't an ability for him to get too close at this point you can see he had a bit of lag at this point and on screen i did not know where he was because his car was going back and two and back and two. It fixes itself there and then it gets back into sync with where it should be. And I have to say, it did confuse me when I was in the lead there because I could see that he had just suddenly gained and then lost time. But you see, it's very close. He's managed to get within a few tenths of me now. And luckily, I did get that good exit from that corner because he would have been very close. And he pushed really hard around that outside, drove a little bit wide. I tried to keep it a little bit tighter. Luckily, he didn't get close enough to really make a move into this corner. And now I've really got to drive aggressively. I knew that I had to really push it now because I couldn't let him get close to me in any overtaking opportunity. As you can see there, really pushed it through that corner and managed to build straight away a few temps extra gap as we're going to jump onto the replay cameras so you can really see how close he was getting and how hard I was pushing through this part of the, the lap now to try and build that gap back up. It was so important that I got a, a lead before the breaking into the chicane because that's the overtaking opportunity that a lot of people will look for if they're close enough. And you can see he obviously knows this. He's pushing really hard as well. Going through the this, these are the set of corners that if I hook up, I tended to gain time on him because I was able to really get the car front end into that corner and get on the power early. As you can see, I've done that reasonably okay and I've managed to build a bit of a lead up. You can see that I've built enough of a cushion up that he can't really make a move now into the chicane. And that was what I tried to do. I had to do it to make sure that there was a chance of myself not getting attacked into that chicane and then driving through the chicane again really attacking the curbs trying to make sure I get a good exit speed and then final corner trying to get a solid exit so that you can't get in my slipstream again going into turn one this was so close and so intense I have to say you know I said it before about how sweaty it was it was so intense racing and this was this is the type of racing that immerses you in the game you know some people will say but GT Sports physics are not the best but it, not everything is down to physics in my view as long as the game is fun and it's got realistic braking and the cornerings aren't it's not too fast which i don't think it is in gt sport it, i've driven i race and i've driven a set of courses and the actual lap times are fairly similar in terms of what you do in different cars 
the grip's fairly similar. I think the Group 3 cars, as you can see, they had a massive moment coming out of that corner where I was really trying to push the, la the gap on the final lap now. Um, yeah, like I was saying, I think the Group 3 cars are actually a bit harder on the GT Sport than they are on other games because of the loss of traction you get. And that's probably why I, I struggle with the Group 3 cars on GT Sport a bit compared to other cars. You do tend to get a, a, a very weird slip angle that just, it just slips sometimes and the rear just goes on the Group 3 cars. But yeah, like I was saying, I don't... I don't think it's all about physics you know when you have racing that's as close as this because of the matchmaking it immerses you in the racing and that's what i really love about gt sport and it's another thing why we'll be getting back on iRacing as well soon there's also some information come out i think about f1 2018 getting matchmaking competitive matchmaking which is really interesting to me because i did used to love that game back in the old like back years ago and i may go back to that as well and start doing some videos on that as well as GT Sport as I race and as long as I keep doing a video on GT Sport every single day I think that'll you know make sure that I'm not sacrificing anything on GT Sport I just want to try and get more than one video out a day and try and bring some other people into other games and um, I'm sure that F1 I can be reasonably competitive on I was when it was on the old games I'd have to obviously get used to the new hybrid engines you can see there going through the final corner and I had sweet weaving in and out just to show respect to the guy behind because that was a great race and I thoroughly enjoyed that. And then I think you, you guys will see, you know, under a second to the finishing line. That was a 20 minute race, um, you know, 11 laps of Nürburgring and the gap was under one second. And you can see the distance, quite a big distance to P3. It shows you how much we were pushing. And you can see we both didn't get any penalties. Other drivers had got penalties in that race. So it shows... We weren't pushing the probably limits as hard as a lot of other people. Some of them may have been contact penalties, but really great racing and I thoroughly enjoyed that. And yeah, like I say, I'm looking forward to F1 getting this kind of you know matchmaking system because this is the kind of racing that you get when you have a matchmaking system. And this is why I will be getting back on iRacing and the F1 and the newer set of courses, which I'm really looking forward to, which is also going to have the competitive matchmaking as well. So. I can't wait for how many different games that are going to have so much good racing going on. We've got GT Sport, which is really probably my favourite game out of, you know, even out of iRacing as well in terms of the the fun it brings. So keeping the GT Sport uploads coming every single day and then hopefully adding, the, you know, in between, in, in like a second video every every other day or something on a different game as well just to add some more variety to the channel anyway hope you guys enjoyed that video i know i thoroughly enjoyed in that being in that race it was a great battle and um, a really respectful battle there was no lunges it was fairly good that i managed to keep him out of the the, the actual distance to make that move into any corners managed to just hold him off in the um you know main breaking zone so thoroughly enjoyable and make sure if you haven't already subscribed to the channel make sure you click that subscription button and make sure you click the notification once so you don't miss any future uploads i do upload every single day on gt sport and that will continue for a long time so make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it as well thanks again for watching everyone